When I upgraded my bike trailer frame last year, I neglected to do anything about the linkage which connects the trailer to the hitch. This I had mentioned was made from some very thin walled tubing, and I knew it was the weak point in the design. It wasn't until I tried hauling over 100 pounds on a street with terrible pavement that the problem became evident. The 4 inch screws holding the linkage onto the frame bent under the force. Thankfully I was still able to ride it home, albeit bent at a funny angle. Another point of concern was the hitch itself, as prior to this I had noticed the piece of plate was starting to bend outward like a potato chip. These two problems I would fix with welding. I started by taking the old linkage and tracing an equivalent size design on some new, thicker material. I chose square tubing because it would be easier to cut and weld. Two pieces of square tubing notched at 45 degrees would replace the old piece. I didn't change anything about the hitch pin mechanism, so I just drilled holes to mount the two bolts from before. To mount the linkage to the frame, I bent a piece of plate to fit around the 3 inch server rack rail. This way I could bolt it on from three different directions for maximum stability. I had to make some cutouts so the bracket would fit around the existing support members. I did this by creating a cardboard template and marking the cutout locations. I also marked where the screw hole locations would go. I then transferred these onto the actual piece, cut them out with an angle grinder, and drilled the holes. When I welded it all together, I added some pieces of plate between the bracket and the linkage to get the proper spacing. I also added a support rib at the 90 degree bend. I also cut a notch in the hitch side for steering clearance. Here's a side by side comparison between the new one and the original. The new linkage mounts onto the trailer with 7 bolts instead of 2. I don't think this thing's coming off anytime soon. As for the hitch, I bent it back and welded some support ribs on it. Taking care of the areas where it would mount on the rear dropout would remain flat. When it was all said and done, I spray painted it sea breeze blue, because that was the only kind of paint that actually worked. The trailer is now back in service, ready to haul all kinds of crazy stuff, like wood, DJ equipment, school desks, and of course scrap metal, grain, food waste, and so forth. This trailer has gone through so many changes over just three years. In fact, the only original parts on it are the hitch and the wheel dropouts. The rest of it has completely been overhauled. Hopefully it will last like this for a while without anything else breaking.